There is no single verse or passage in the Bible that proves the canon or declares the entire Bible to be Scripture. It is also an overstatement to claim the 4th century councils settled the complete biblical canon. Determining the scope of Scripture was a complex historical process, not something immediately obvious or self-evident. The canon became self-authenticating for Protestants only once its contents were finally fixed. That only happened around the 1600s. To claim Scripture is self-authenticating is to retroactively project a 17th century Protestant concept back onto the 1st century and ignore 1600 years of dispute over the canon's contents. The formation of the biblical canon was a historical process that took place over centuries. Some key factors that influenced which books were included. 1. Apostolic origin or connection. Books that were written by apostles, for example Matthew John, or associated with apostles, for example Mark with Peter, Luke with Paul, were preferred. 2. Widespread and long-standing use in Christian worship and teaching. Books that were already in widespread use across churches were included. Those with more limited or disputed use were excluded. 3. Consistency with the rule of faith. Books that aligned with the core Christian teachings about God, Jesus, salvation, etc. That had developed by the second century were preferred. Those that contradicted these core teachings were rejected. 4. Rejecting heretical or false teaching. Some books were rejected because they were believed to promote heretical views, especially those associated with Gnostianity. The early church aimed to reject these views. 5. Geographic spread and apostolic succession. The canon that was accepted across churches with a succession of leadership tracing back to the apostles, especially across the major centers of Rome, Alexandria and Antioch, was preferred. No single Bible verse establishes the New or Old Testament canon. The New Testament was the result of historical consensus among early Christian leaders and churches over the first four centuries of Christian history. The canon was strengthened at church councils, with the Synod of Hippo in 393 AD and councils of Carthage in 397 and 419 AD. These late 4th century councils ratified a list of books that reflected the general consensus of Christianity in that region at that time. However, the decisions of these councils were not universally accepted or enforceable across all of Christianity. The first time the canon was formally and authoritatively defined for the entire Catholic Church was at the Council of Trent in 1546, over 1100 years after Hippo and Carthage. The books included in Trent's canon are the modern Catholic Bible. For Protestant Christians, the biblical canon was not fully resolved until the 1600s. The disputes revolved around secondary canon, what Prophet Martin Luther termed apocryphal, accepted in Catholic and Greek Orthodox Bibles. Early Protestant leaders like the Prophet Martin Luther and William Tyndale recognized the Hebrew Bible and most of the New Testament as Scripture, but disagreed over texts accepted in the Catholic canon. The Apocrypha includes books like Tobit, Judith, Wisdom, Syrac, Baruch, and 1 and Amp T2 Maccabees. Catholic and Orthodox Bibles consider these scripture. Protestants claimed they lack historical or prophetic authority. The Protestant Geneva Bible printed them as intertestamental books, though considered non-canonical. The Puritans viewed their selection of Scripture as the sole infallible authority for Christian faith and practice. In the 1647 Westminster Confession, Puritan leaders formally excluded the Deuterocanon, finalizing the 66-book Protestant canon. The Church of England agreed to exclude the Deuterocanon, but still viewed them as useful resources for Christian instruction. The 1563-39 Articles left them ambivalently positioned between canonical and non-canonical. Debate continued for decades. By the mid-1600s, most Protestants agreed to exclude what they called the Apocrypha, settling on the 66 books viewed as Scripture by Jews and Jesus. 
however, apocrypha remain in Anglican liturgy. Without a central Protestant authority, the biblical canon was discerned through centuries of debate, discussion, and consensus building. Not until the 1600s did a clear 66-book Protestant canon emerge, demonstrating the difficulty of unilaterally defining this authority. Leaders claimed scripture is self-authenticating, but it took time to work through disagreements. The self-authenticating claim is difficult to reconcile with the historical reality that determining the biblical canon took centuries. Distinguishing which books should be included in the canon required human discernment, debate, and decision-making. To claim self-authentication is propaganda, not truth. The Apocrypha, accepted as scripture by Catholics and Orthodox but not Protestants, poses a challenge. These books were viewed as scripture for over 1,000 years before Protestants rejected them. These facts of canon development are incompatible with the late Protestant rhetoric of self-authentication. Let's analyze logically. Premise 1. Scripture, the biblical canon, is claimed to be self-authenticating, meaning its divine authority and contents should be obvious, innate and self-evident. Premise 2. The contents of the biblical canon, what books and writings constitute scripture, were disputed for over 1,000 years before Protestants, Catholics and Orthodox settled on their respective canons. Conclusion. Premise 1 and Premise 2 contradict each other. If scripture's authority and contents were truly self-evident, there should not have been prolonged dispute over what actually constitutes scripture. If the Bible is the infallible word of God with a self-authenticating authority and message, how did its contents remain unclear and disputed for over 1,000 years of Christian history? The very fact that sincere Christians and scholars could not agree on what constitutes the biblical canon during this time conflicts with the notion of self-authentication. If Scripture's divine authority is meant to be obvious and self-evident, how was it overlooked for ten-plus centuries of church history? This article is available on the coffee page linked in the description. If you like this concise content by Lloyd de Jong, please subscribe on Coffee for more and support more of this work there. Here on YouTube, please like the content with a thumbs up, share it and subscribe to the channel.